Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, we're gonna be talking about my September favorites. I have quite a few things to talk about because I didn't do a favorites video for the month of August. I was just so focused on finishing up my lookbooks and getting those out. Before I jump into my favorites, I feel like I have to talk about my hair because I changed it. I actually just got it done a couple days ago, I went to my stylist Jenny and I told her I really want to go for an ashier color. Can we do that? And she was like, yeah, I think we can do that. Let's see what is possible. And a few hours later, this is the hair color that I came out with. In certain lights, it looks really purple. I haven't washed it yet myself, so it's going to fade a little bit, I think. And then in other lights, it just looks like a really, 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 really ashy blonde. I love how it came out. I love the color. I'm still getting used to the color on my head, though, because I've never had a color like this before. Um, there have been times where I've wanted to go silver, but it was just such a long process and long way to get there so now that i have silver hair kind of unintentionally i'm like really happy with it anyway let's move on to my favorites so let's talk about makeup first i have this foundation from shiseido this is their synchro skin self-refreshing foundation it's oil free with spf 30 and i'm in the shade 320 pine and i've been wanting to talk about this foundation for months now i actually got this early i think back in july um, because i was doing a campaign with them and immediately it became one of my favorite foundations but I couldn't talk about it yet and then I didn't do a favorites video in August but here I am finally able to talk about it this foundation adjusts with your skin throughout the day through heat sweat pollution it just manages itself in a way that looks amazing throughout the day and I'm actually wearing it today and it just feels comfortable, my skin can still breathe, it doesn't feel heavy. When you first squeeze it out into your hand, it's got a creamier consistency than most foundations. It's not completely liquid, but when I put it on my skin and blend it in, it just blends in so beautifully. It really evens out my skin tone and it just looks amazing. I wish this was talked about more um, in all of the foundation launches. There were so many good ones, um, but this was definitely the top of the list for me. Next up for makeup, I have a brow product. This is the Hourglass Arch Brow Shaping Gel, and this is the uh, translucent or clear, clear, it's the clear one. It doesn't have any pigment on it. And I've just been loving this to brush through my brows and set them in place. Sometimes I get into this phase where I wanna grow my brows out, give it a more uh, bushier look or more like untamed look. So my brow hair is in the front, mostly in the front, have become longer and I like using this to brush them up and outward and just give it a more like fluffier look. And it just feels really nice to brush and comb through and because it's clear, I can just use it pretty freely and not have to worry about it getting all over my face. And it's just a really nice part of my makeup routine that I've added where I can just like, you know, comb through it and it's like kind of soothing. It really keeps my brow hairs like up and lifted throughout the day and I really love the look. I don't know how long I'll be doing this look for. I don't think my brows can really grow that much more. I actually really do love their pencil too. The thing is I do my brows so often that brow pencils don't last as long for me. Um, like in terms of the longevity of the pencil like I could go through those maybe in like a week or two and it's just not very efficient or money saving for me so I always just end up using the pom the pomade but I do love using brown pencils and would use them more if they just lasted longer um, but anyway that's my little spiel on brow pencils <laughs> while we're talking about makeup I wanted to share one of my favorite makeup looks that I did which is weird to be like I have a favorite makeup look that I did on myself but I really like how it turned out and it's the honey rose makeup look which Yoandre actually helped me name it was like such a cute perfect name um, but I really love the brown shadows the graphic liners I as you can see I'm still really into graphic liners and lines and if you haven't seen that makeup tutorial yet then I will link it in the info card and down below it was just such a pretty look and I really loved how it turned out. I was just experimenting and playing around with browns and um, I really like how it turned out. So I have a favorite makeup look. If you guys haven't seen it yet, you should go watch it. <laughs> That's it for makeup. Let's move on. <laughs> uh, Self-promotion is so weird sometimes. I also just woke up from a nap because I was waiting for the sun to come out and so I'm a little like weird on energy. It's like high but low. 
so normal. I have normal energy. <laughs> I don't know what I'm rambling on about. Anyway, on to the next favorite. Moving on to skincare, I have the Clarins Double Serum. I actually did a whole video with Clarins on this um, where I did a 28 day serum challenge. So if you guys haven't seen that, I will also link it in the info card and down below. But I genuinely love this serum. The 28 day challenge is over, but I'm still using the serum. It's called the Double Serum because it has oil and water in it. So when I squirt it onto my hand and apply it to my face, it feels so nice. Like the texture of the serum is just really calming and soothing and it smells amazing. You can see more of the results in the video. The short of it is my skin was just more radiant and glowy. I felt really hydrated. It just feels healthier after using the serum. Um, so definitely check out the video if you guys want to learn more. I really love the serum and I'm going to be so sad when I'm done using it. It honestly smells amazing too. I don't know what it is. It's like a light herbaly scent. It just smells so good. <laughs> Next, I have a blow dryer to talk about. Um, I always thought blow dryers were the same until I got this one. So this is the T3 Curelux blow dryer. They actually sent this to me and when I got it in the mail, it was like a dream come true. <laughs> because I had always wanted to own something from T3. I thought their products looked beautiful. I'd always heard amazing things about it, but I had never had the money or the budget. I just could never bring myself to buy something that expensive. So when I got T3 in the mail, I was just so freaking excited and happy. And this blow dryer is amazing. It blow dries my hair so fast. And I did not think blow dryers could really make a difference in how fast your hair dries or anything like that. But um, after having bleached my hair, it, it just retains so much more water. So it takes much longer to blow dry. But with this blow dryer, it just speeds up the process. I don't know what technology is behind it, but it's so good. And I thought it could have just been all in my head like, oh, maybe you just are biased because you really like T3 and you think it's blow drying your hair faster but I actually used this to blow dry Cody after I gave him a bath, Cody's my dog, and that went by a lot faster, for sure. I was like, there's no way I can pretend that that didn't go by faster. Um, I also really love this blow dryer because it has different options and settings, so you can adjust the temperature. There are five different temperature settings. I usually try to stay at the two or three lower levels. There's also a cooling button. If you press the cooling button once, it just stays cool for the rest of the time and you can press it again to go back to heat. So you don't have to hold the cooling button the entire time um, like I've had to with other hair dryers. You can also adjust how powerful the fan and the air is. And one thing that's really cool about this is that it actually has three sensors. So if you're in the middle of blow drying and you need to adjust your hair or put your hair down or put serum in it, you can just set it down on the counter and the sensor will detect that it's no longer in your hand anymore and it'll stop blow drying. And then once you pick it up again, it'll turn back on. Sometimes I find it easier to just turn it off because it's just so automatic for me, but it is a really nice feature to have. Like I thought that was really cool. So um, this attachment also comes off so you don't need to use it. It comes with um, another attachment also. One of the attachments is for volume, one is for straightening. I don't remember which one this one is. Um, but yeah, I know T3 is on the pricer end, trust me, I know. But if you have the money or the budget to splurge or just laying around, um, you wanna treat yourself to something nice and you blow dry your hair often, then I highly recommend this one. Um, it's just also really pretty. I think they also come in a different color. I think, I think I've seen a black one on their site or something, but Yes, this is an amazing hair dryer. <laughs> Next, we're gonna move on to my media favorites. In the month of August and September, I watched a lot of TV and there was one show that just I loved so much. I have not been able to stop talking about it and it's called The 100. There are six seasons of it and if you have never heard of it, it's a show that started on The CW um, and I thought they moved completely onto Netflix, but I might be wrong. But all of the seasons that are out are on Netflix and that's where I watched it. The premise of the show is it takes place 100 years after the end of the world, after a nuclear war destroys the planet Earth and you have the civilization that lives out 
on a space station and the leaders of the space station decide to send a hundred of their people mostly I believe they're like teenagers or young adults um, they send them to earth to see if earth is habitable again and then the story kind of takes off from there and what makes this show so great to me is first of all I love sci-fi I don't know if you guys know this but I love sci-fi fantasy shows and movies growing up on the weekends I would just watch the sci-fi channel all day Saturday all day Sunday I would just go through those movie binges and I love sci-fi I think it's so fun and just really entertaining there's that the hundred is definitely a sci-fi show and th there's just so much going on in this show in a good way you have so many different relationships and dynamics to think about and analyze it's really philosophical because you see that these group of people have to make really tough decisions for their people for humanity to survive and it makes you think like what would you do in that situation what would happen in this situation like, they also cover a lot of possible outcomes um, for the end of the world like what would happen if this group survived what would happen if there was a group of people who decided to do this before the end of the world and so it just covers a lot of different scenarios and combines them in a way that still makes sense granted it's still sci-fi so there are a lot of things that you could question and i've definitely been like yeah that's kind of weird but they're mild enough where you can overlook them and still see like the bigger story and what's going on and it's just really cool like they make it seem as realistic as it can be for a sci-fi show there's just a lot of questions about morality and there are so many good lines within that show that i wish i had written down because it really makes you question who you are the choices that you've made and what you're capable of doing and it is just a, it's just an amazing show i love the show so much i might actually just watch all six seasons again that's how much I'm obsessed with the show. Moving on to my last media favorite and last favorite in general. I actually listen to a lot of YouTube podcasts and one that I find really entertaining is the No Chaser podcast by um, Timothy DeLaghetto and uh, Ricky Shucks and Nikki Blades are also on the podcast and they also have guests that come in. This podcast is just all fun. Like, it's about relationships and sex and they have guests come on and share their experiences. They also talk about career and work and stuff, but it's mostly focused on relationships and sex and they talk about things that are taboo sometimes to talk about with your friends or in public, but they just talk about it like it's not a big deal and we should be talking openly about these things. I don't even know how I got started watching the No Chaser podcast, but I've seen quite a few episodes at this point um, and they're all just really fun. Like I love playing them in the background when I'm cleaning or when I'm um, just doing some light editing. It's just fun to listen to them talk to each other and have these really funny ass conversations. So if you're looking for a lighthearted podcast and just want something that you can laugh along to, I highly recommend that one. Anyway, that is it for my favorites. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and I know I rambled off a lot, but I had a lot to say, I guess. Definitely check out The 100. If nothing else, check that one out. Um, that is a really great show. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.